Robert Wagstaff, a man of seasity, could not resist his own debauchy. Vox Solo in flames, Robert's doing in fact, only to lead to many lives cracked. Be it tendency or an act more helplessly, either way, Wagstaff found his destiny. Robert Wagstaff, a brilliant inventor and the founder of the Voxola Radio Company. Yes, that radio. And he is now forever trapped within the constant. Or is he? I'll tell you what though, he is here for the very same knowledge granted to Wilson. Although that is not to say that Robert didn't bring along some of his own. He sits at 150 health. 150 sanity, but a hefty 225 hunger total, and boasts his very own crafting tab too, tinkering. So, let's break it down. Oh wait, there's an immediate problem there. We can't bloody see anything, folks, because without any of his soon-to-be-discussed goggles, Wagstaff suffers from nearsightedness, meaning a significant spectrum of your visibility while playing is gonna be in a constant state of blurriness. And I simply do not see that working out for us, so let's go about fixing it, shall we? And the simplest choice, Spec Toggles. Crafted incredibly easily with but a single gold and porky butt, the goggles will improve Wagstaff's sight to match normal levels of visibility. But they also boast the mechanic of revealing hidden threats, just like the hentai of the swamps, or those annoying flups and those poisonous homes within Shipwrecked, or even the many traps within the ruins of the Hamlet DLC. Furthermore, one can even locate peculiar objects within Hamlet and proceed to investigate them for additional items and rewards. And you won't need a magnifying glass to do so either. And the potential for these rewards can be seen right here. It's obviously very nice that we can actually see crap now, but what about all of our nighttime adventures or those within the deep dark caves? I believe the infroggles are going to work wonders for us in that regard, so slap a doodad and two flaming pieces of wood together and have fun looking at all the wacky colors. The infroggles will show living things in pink, but these are really just moggles with a little less on the durability side of things, so really only use them and equip an occasionally within the caves and the room as they actually are very useful in detecting what is alive and isn't or what may be lurking below. Or you can even use them for your treasure hunting within the hamlet for a kind of easily obtainable light source. Never underestimate dorky scientists. They almost always know how to duke it out. With a pair of spec toggles and a single piece of cutstone, you can create a visor. Armored lenses that have you seeing rectangles while getting your noggin chomped on, but at 600 durability and an 85% absorption rate, these puppies rank high on the list of spectacular armors across all of the Don't Starve experiences. And heck, if you already know the kiting patterns anyway, the limited view means diddly squat. It's pretty nuts that he has access to this good of armor this early. I mean, what the heck, man? What's up with all the cool stuff needing next to nothing? Thing to craft them with this guy. Fry Focals are next, and you'll be needing a red gem this time around. And if you're looking to pew pew your enemies away, then look no further. Fry Focals fire frickin' laser balls out of your eyeballs, dealing 50 damage to your targets, also setting them on fire for additional damage. But remember though, a mob on fire does mean everything on fire, and fire in solo don't starve is not the same as fire and don't starve together. But make note though too, folks, Fry Focals Focals are actually more efficient to utilize over that of normal spec toggles, given that the durability of the laser pew pews only decreases upon firing said pew pews. Very nice for when you want to continuously play without mistaking a tree for your grandmother every five seconds. That is, if you can handle the orange tint that's gonna be on everything. We're Mary Poppins, y'all. The Telebrella is next, and hold the presses as it bloody uses a pretty parasol in its recipe. And heck yes, giving use to something useless is something I love. On its own though, it's a weak umbrella at only 35% wetness resistance, but there's gotta be something to it, right? Right, but we need a telepad to unlock the potential. Bring together the materials needed for an icebox, pretty much, to discover the Tele Brothers' true purpose, teleportation. And let's keep this simple. If no light umbrella, no instant transmission for you, friend. If you're distracted by the pretty blinking lights, it means you're getting closer and closer, so keep heading in that direction. And once you do see green, 
You're golden. Tell you away, my friends. But you only do get 10 uses, and honestly, thank goodness for that. This mechanic is already pretty darn amazing, but can you imagine if we could just do it forever with no limits? It would be more game-breaking than it kind of already is. Huh. Seems to me like Thumper has had enough of Bambi's crap. Hammer together some gears, flints, and, well, hammers to create a hulking machine that can absolutely decimate nearby planted trees and structures and your face. It has unlimited uses, though, so have fun farming and using it wisely. But sadly, it does only do 20 to 30 damage. So potential trap or combat scenarios are uh, no-go. But two final notes before we wrap it up here. All of Wagstaff's headgear will protect him against the humid season fog in Hamlet. Even the simple spec toggles. I really don't think I need to explain how useful that can really be. And finally, Robert's so-called delicate stomach hasn't taken three health damage per piece of raw food consumed. But I say whoop de do. It's really only the early game that will see you eating raw foods like berries, seeds, and other veggies. But now, just wait until you really need to eat, craft a quick fire, cook them up, and munch until you're set. I really don't see this as much of a downside, especially because food like raw blue mushrooms just completely negated to begin with, and just now, a simple cooking of others just changes it anyways. It's not that big of a deal. However, I would like to leave you with this. The more damage Wagstaff becomes, the more a faded out, or better yet, glitchy-like state begins to occur. So I ask you, is Wagstaff actually just a projection? Was he always? Heck, is Robert Wagstaff even who he says he is? Or perhaps, is he no longer the plot thickens? But there you have it, everyone. The cryptic founder embracing his new found destiny and all of its glory. There are still questions to be answered and secrets to reveal. But for now, know that Wagstaff may not rewrite the book on characters, but he'll still provide some unique avenues of survival through his many new inventions. Thanks for watching, folks. Well wishes to all, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.